Hello, my name is Frank Lipinski with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection's Bureau of Environmental Analysis, Restoration, and Standards. Today, I want to introduce you to our brand new 2018-2020 web-based integrated report. This video is just an overview of all the information that you can find on our water quality conditions in our state. We hope that you find it helpful in your review of the new online integrated report format. This web report is a result of the collaboration of many people, including one very important recent retiree, Jack Flammer. Thank you for your service to the people of New Jersey. We'll start with a brief intro to the layout shown here. The integrated report, or IR, is made up of seven chapters represented by the seven tabs at the top of the screen. We will explore these left to right. Our general information tab contains a lot of useful parts of this report, including explanations of the purpose of our water quality assessment process. In 2014, New Jersey's integrated report went to a rotating basin approach. 2018-2020 listing cycles, we are focusing on the lower and upper Delaware water regions. The focus regions go through a slightly more robust data review to identify area trends, water quality issues, and improvements. The new website provides very helpful technical documents such as our water quality assessment methods, and all of these resources are available at the click of a button. The next blue bar describes New Jersey water resources. As the most densely populated state in the nation, New Jersey's water resources are under a good amount of pressure. For the integrated report, one of the main goals is to establish science-based decisions that provide comprehensive and highly confident water quality assessments that the state can use to help determine regulatory, preventative, and restoration priorities. The foundation for all assessments is the quality and quantity of our data sets. New Jersey is lucky that we have many robust and high quality monitoring networks. For 2018-2020, we downloaded over 3.8 million data points. The predominant provider of these results is the department, but as you can see from the chart, 60% of the data comes from sources outside the department. Thank you to all our data providers. Our web integrated report provides links to an explanation of the data organizations and the sources of data for easy access and transparency. The water quality categories in our integrated report is presented in detail in the next section. Please note, sublist one and two make up unimpaired waters. They currently meet surface water quality standards. Sublist three is made up of areas where there is not enough data to issue an assessment. Sublist 4 and 5 make up areas where water quality is not meeting surface water quality standards, while sublist 5 makes up our 303D. All of our data is compared to our surface water quality standards to determine attainment or non-attainment for sublist placement. The applicable concentration by parameter is based on the surface water classification of each water body. The next tab contains all information related to our seven different designated uses. This section contains our most innovative tool in the web-based presentation of our report, the interactive maps, which lets you explore detailed information for each designated use on a very easy to use platform. Please click this bar to learn more about your area specific data. An introduction to this interface will soon appear in our additional resources tab. Under the surface water quality designated uses blue bar, the report provides how many assessment units, AUs, are calculated for each designated use and shows charts, which are supported by downloadable data for further review. This year, we changed the color scheme for assessment categories, and the new colors are easier to interpret. Some important positive highlights of this report include that our ocean waters continue to show high water quality, with 100% of water supporting recreation and shellfish harvesting. In the upper Delaware region, biological communities and trout are showing improvement. An increase in impairments does not necessarily indicate worsening water quality condition. In each listing cycle, there are changes that affect the assessment universe and our protocols for assessment decision. Improved detection limits for measuring pollutants, improved equipment technology, more rigorous assessment procedures, more rigorous water quality standards, and more rigorous water body classifications can affect listings. Most importantly, sampling in waters that were previously unassessed has resulted in an increase in the number of impaired waters in this cycle. It is critical to identify the drivers of impairment to identify development of management actions to address issues in our waters. The top 10 impaired parameters are categorized by designated use as shown in the different colors on this chart. 
top 10 pollutants has not changed in this assessment cycle, but arsenic will soon surpass bacterial impairments due to increased sampling for this parameter and lower detection levels at labs. Many of these arsenic impairments are due to natural conditions. We haven't had any changes in trends since the last integrated report. Our Division of Science and Research did release a new long-term trend study that covers 35 years of water quality data up to 2016. This finding expanded on the previous 30-year report furnished by USGS and shows that the results of these trends did not change. Biological data did not show any significant trends for the state, but regional information shows trends such as Lower Delaware with worsening conditions while Upper Delaware regions improving. The number of metal listings on the 303D list has drastically decreased with the Delaware regions, having over a 90% reduction in these impairments. Overall, trends in New Jersey water quality show a mixed conclusion in this integrated report. Groundwater quality assessment results are also included in this report, and the data is again available for download by clicking here. As mentioned earlier, the focus of the 2018-2020 IR was the Upper and Lower Delaware Water Region. More details on the outcome of this comprehensive review in these areas appear below within the expandable blue bars which mirror the presentation of the information in the prior chapters. Our fourth tab contains protection and restoration efforts. New Jersey works to improve water quality through the establishment of TMDLs, Total Maximum Daily Loads, Category 1 Protections, and restoration through non-point source pollution management plans. Progress is documented in the next blue bar. This shows impairment delistings, success story write-ups, and improving water quality trends. Let's move on to the next chapter, which covers details on NJDEP's water pollution control programs. Each program description can be displayed by clicking on the left light blue program index. Each report, we highlight several special state concerns. For our 2018-2020 IR, the department focused on discussions of climate change, harmful algal blooms, increased trends in impairments of total dissolved solids, chlorides, and PFOA and PFOS chemical presence in our waters. The last chapter is a place where one can find additional information important to the web report. As you can see, the goal of transitioning to the integrated report online from a Word document is to make it a premier water quality resource for the public by making the information easy to read, easy to access, improving visualization of the results, and improving transparency. We made a major step forward by reducing the size of the report. We did this by providing most important information on web pages, and they provide links to important documents and web pages for further review. We improved access and transparency by creating interactive maps, charts, and linking to important information and detailed data. The consolidation of this report from a Word document into a web-based report also led to quicker turnaround times. It allowed us to take advantage of new web tools, and we will look to improve on these in the future. The web-based integrated report is assembled through many contributions of staff within the department. Thank you to the many water quality monitoring data providers statewide. Thank you all for your contributions and have a great day.